Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka with Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Today I'm with Phil Gent of Makokota at the Jackson County Historical Museum's Machine Shed, where Phil is going to show us a wide variety of agricultural implements and tools that they've collected over the years and that are on display here in the museum in Makokota, Iowa. Phil, what are some of the things that we're going to see? Well, we have a lineup of uh, tillage equipment, uh, planters, and some uh, harvesting equipment <clears throat> that date back to about 1800. We have in this building mostly equipment up to about 1920. Uh, so this is, this is the older machinery. Okay. Well, you won't want to miss it, so be sure to come back. This is station one, and uh, uh, basically displays the tillage and planting equipment. And we start here with a moldboard plow that, according to my research and understanding, this plow would have had a, uh, the original patent was for a two-piece moldboard, and there was a patent for that in 18, excuse me, 1798. Wow. And so in the early 1800s anyway. And, uh, and then we go into the, uh, a couple more of the uh, cast iron type plows, and which was the original thing until uh, John Deere and a couple other guys uh, designed the, uh, the scouring plows. And uh, this is considered a sod busting plow, I guess, or a sod breaker because of the long uh, extended uh, moldboard. And then you go into the newer type uh, walking plow is a John Deere. The John Deere is a scouring the, uh, the older steel plow was not a scouring plow, as I understand it. And so the difference on that is the finish of the metal, the, the kind of steel that's being used? The newer plows had a, a, a um, finished shiny steel. John Deere made his first one out of a huge saw blade, okay. as I understand it and it had a, a, uh, a shiny finish on it, and so it would allow the, uh, the soil to slide on it and not build up and get stuck. Uh, the, the problem that the pioneers had in the 1800s was as they came west, the uh, prairie soils had a lot more organic matter, and the soil would not slide off of the old, like it did the old plows, in the eastern states right and so they came up with what they called the sure. scouring plow sure and it's kind of fitting that you've got an ox yoke here because some of these big wood beam plows would have been pulled by oxen yes yes they would have started with some of them i'm sure and this is a uh, emerson plow um, i have to mentioned that when I started working for the museum in about 2014, this building was stuffed full of equipment and machinery and stuff. And places, machinery is packed three high. And uh, <laughs> so we, we kept the Pioneer machinery here and moved everything else over to another building that we built at the time. And some of this equipment, especially this Emerson plow, is a good example. It was covered with so much dirt and grime and grease that it just looked like a piece of rusty iron. Yeah. And uh, I steamed it up, cleaned it up with a steam power machine, 
and look at the the amount of original paint that's yep. still on it. I think yep. it's really amazing. Yep. So it was red and green. Yes. Yeah, it's a beauty. And then we go to a uh, uh, larger plow called the gang plow, and including the uh, the uh, eveners hanging on the wall. That took five or five or six horses to uh, keep that thing going. Very nice. And the nice leather fly nets. Yes. Up overhead, we have just a variety of different types of uh, plows. Some of them field plows, garden plows, and whatever. And uh, Originally, those shelves were stuffed full of uh, equipment, but we just kind of thinned it out so, so you could things see could it. be seen better. Yeah. Yeah, we had a pretty good team of uh, people uh, that helped as we took stuff out and we cleaned it up with, with uh, brushes and solvent and Murphy's oil soap on some of the wood and, uh, yeah. and then put clear coat on a lot of the uh, iron pieces so uh, to keep them from rusting too bad anymore. Our main museum here at the fairgrounds uh, pretty much got started about 1965 when a benefactor donated the money for a large building here on the fairgrounds and half of it to be used for the fair administration and half for the historical society. And so that's when our organization as we know it today got its start and then for the next 20, 30 years was really fortunate because that was when a lot of area farmers were retiring right. and cleaning out machine sheds right. and brought it here. So it, it, it's, it's all timing as right. well as uh, people interested in preserving that stuff. Uh, probably our largest donator of machinery and equipment it was a guy that was single in Jackson County. He is thought to have been the last guy farming with horses in Jackson County. And when he retired, his hobby was going to farm sales. He would buy all old equipment right. and bring it right here. He never did take it home. I'll be darned. So wow. he's wow. donated thousands of wow. things to the museum. Wow. So that's the kind of people that yeah. put our museums together. Yeah. So. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life 100 years ago. Fieldwork has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. There's something that very few guys, farmers, say they ever got to use was a harrow cart. Right. They say that took too much energy from the horses. They're supposed to pull the plow and not pull you. So most people had to walk, but a few privileged guys got to have a harrow cart. <clears throat> Assortment of eveners. And I, yeah, I got a variety. I just kind of randomly picked an assortment of uh, yeah. eveners and yokes to uh, demonstrate the, the different pieces. And mm -hmm. So 
and then the horse-drawn disc. That's pretty basic disc, I guess. A lot of them still in use today for hobbyists. It's a nice tongue truck on it. Yeah. It, um... I'm wondering if it could be fitted with a pole, if it were, ever had a pole on it. Yeah, you put them right on here. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, it would take the same pole as on the plow. Okay. There's a, uh, an iron on there that, that slides right on right, here. Right, right, there you yeah. go. Because that can be a dangerous piece otherwise, if you've yeah. got hilly ground. Um, I've, got, I've got two discs at home that I have used, and as long as you're on relatively level ground, you're fine. But if you right. get on hill, you better be careful. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. That looks a nice piece. There is a harrow that a guy claims that was hand built in the 1850s. I have no idea, but mm. it, it is pretty crude. Yep. Now, when we clean the building out and we run into this sled and no one had any idea what the heck that was. So <laughs> in order to get ideas on how to redo this building, my wife and I started traveling around the joining states and we went to a place in Nebraska. Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. A huge muse museum. 20 some buildings and I found one of these and it's for so it's checked a, corn huh it's to, it's to mark rows for checked corn yes nice yeah. yeah 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 the one in that museum was was one piece bigger but anyway okay. it's a row marker yeah. and uh, then the first mechanical corn planters as I understand it was the hand operated units like some we have here and that was about 1850 to 52 when those came out. And those would have been easy things for people to throw away when they just stopped using them. Yeah, that's pretty much true, although it's also pretty surprising the number of them you see at, yeah. at sales from time okay. to time. But um, They made a wide variety of different kinds. Yeah. And they went... And um, in fact, the top photograph there shows a guy operating two of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Right. I saw one sale at an auction a few years ago that actually laid on your shoulders. Okay. And you could walk through the field and plant two rows at a time. And I think that thing went for over $300. Okay. Okay, our first real corn planter, I guess, is, is this um, A.C. Evans planter. It was built about 1885, and here's another example of something that was covered with dirt and grease. Oh, really? And uh, we went to it with a scrub brush and soap, and this is what we got. And uh, everything is just in really extremely good condition. Wow, there's the plates. It sure is. Yeah. But uh, I've heard from a couple sources that know that this was stashed in the hay of a barn in Clinton County. Okay. For a few decades. Okay. Nice. And so. Uh, nice. It's a beautiful piece. I wonder if the seats were added, were replaced. That is a replacement, yes, yeah, yeah. and it's not very authentic, but it's there. And then the kid there. would sit there yeah. to trip the, uh -huh. for this. Yeah. Before they had the wire running down. Yes. Nice. That's a very nice piece. And then Charles Deere, John Deere's son, and another guy by the name of Charles um, Mansour got together, and Mansour had an idea for a, uh, uh, a type of planter, 
it's, it's a different mechanism in the rotary drops. And uh, so they got together and built this planter. And then later, they designed this apparatus that mounts on the front of the boxes and switches it to check planter. Okay. All right, so it's tripping it. Is it, it's, oh, so it, there is a wire running on it then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All it right, goes, gotcha. Yeah, yep. it goes yep. through I this see it. Yep. stuff on the end here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. I'll be darned. And from what I understand, the first check planters operated with a cord. Yeah, and, and right, a rope with knots. Right, right. With knots yep. in it, yeah. Yep. Yeah, before the wire. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. part of the neatest thing I think about this old equipment is look at the detail of, right. of uh, painting that they right. They cared. They did took pride. In that day when, they know. took pride. They did stuff that they wouldn't have to have done, but they wanted it to look a certain way. They sure did. I like the concave um, wheels yeah. on it, the mm -hmm. steel wheels. Yeah, that's a nice piece. Um, I'll oh, mention the row this is very partly cool. because maybe you know some people somewhere. We've got another corn planter up here. Oh yeah. That um, I think it's uh, oh, Fremont, maybe. Okay. It was built in uh, is it Sterling, Illinois. Um, it was uh, originally had wood wheels. Okay. What they called barrel wheels. And um, I would really like to find an authentic one that's been rebuilt, and especially even if I could find parts that I could put that planter back together. Okay. All right. Well, we'll definitely put the word out. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at RuralHeritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. And this is a John Deere 99 corn planter. The predecessor was the Model 9. And so there was the Model 9, the 99, and the 999. Okay. And the 999, I have one at home that I have used for years. And I think that was the last John Deere planter on steel wheels. Okay. Then it went to the 290, which is rubber tires. All right. After that. And the, the, the uh, 999, I think, was manufactured around uh, 1910 or so, possibly. Once they got these, this plate system down, they didn't, it didn't really advance. I mean, they, they got it down pretty well. Well, from this point forward, the basic design and mechanics didn't change much at all till about the 1940s or maybe around 50. And, it works uh, good. and of course, corn changed. Corn yes. started changing around then. Yeah. Um, dent corn. Well, yeah, and at one time you had to you had to have the, the right plates for the size of kernel. Right, for the middle and I middles think and they the end. used to get a higher price for the bigger kernels, didn't they? I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's so why they were careful a, with what they picked to plant for next year. Quite a variety of them there. And yeah. That was, of course, before hybrid corn. And there's a lot of these up in haylofts. Um, yes. Just the rolls by themselves. Yeah. That roll is in great shape. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the corn planting, and then we go into the small grains. And first you start with the, the hand-blown seeders. And the most unique one I think that we have is this violin piece. You just run that back and forth, and it runs the wheels. Okay, 
So it's violin like you'd use a violin bow on your violin, you go back and forth. Right? Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. I had seen a lot of these around. Sure. But then when, when I found one of those here in the museum, I thought, now that is really Yeah, I've never seen neat. one. <laughs> wow, look at all that wood. Here's another case where someone, uh, some people in the community went to an auction and they saw that thing and uh, they bought it to, just to bring to the museum. So uh, uh, we had a little demonstration plot here in Makoka uh, uh, eight, ten years ago and uh, uh, we just kind of pl played around and demonstrated some equipment. And I took this thing out and uh, seeded about a half acre of alfalfa with it. You're just walking. There's no horse. You're just pushing it around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got some size with the uh, cradles up there. Yeah, there's some cradles up there, miscellaneous ones. The we got two almost perfect ones over here on the wall. They sure do, yeah. And have you seen a grain flail? Yeah, that piece on there. On the back wall the, there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yep. know. I guess I've seen one in person, but I've seen pictures too. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That was hard work. Everything from beating the, the forage with a flail like that to stomping on it in the haymow floor and anything that work. would work the grain out of the shaft. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a nice hay rake. This is a gem, I think. Yeah, it's a flip over rake. It's, yep. It's gorgeous. Yeah. That's a lot of wood. You ever heard of the Banowitz antique family here? Mm -mm. They were huge antique dealers. Okay. And they Makokita? bought and sold stuff all over the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when they closed down a few years ago, uh, they had some stuff left over and they, they uh, gave us this uh, rake. Oh, it's in great And shape. the tedder. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that's a really nice wood tether. Uh-huh. I don't think it could be much nicer shape. No, because um, these things rattle apart. Um, but yeah, this, this rake is, is, is like new. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, there was one of these. And then the hay loader. We have had five hay loaders, I think. And we've given two away to other museums. And uh, uh, this is the best one that, uh, that we have had. And from what I understand, it's the newer model because with the extra wheel down here. Okay. But it was all open. Mm-hmm. Most of the ones that I see have got a bed going up. A metal bed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this one either didn't or they took it off. It, it didn't? Perhaps? Well, I, I think it was probably, it was probably like yeah, this, Yeah, right. Joe. There's the drawing. Shows but, it open. Yeah, it's all open there, yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it must be a bunch of other ones. that. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but we'll be back next week as we continue our tour of the Jackson County, Iowa Historic Museum Machine Shed when we'll take a look at more of their collection, including a restored vintage windmill and a rock crushing machine. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.